Okay, so we're just coming out the yard with this um, with this mare. She's 14 years old, this mare, and we just broke her. She was a riding mare. Never done a great deal uh, riding, you know, just hacking out. Um, nice mare, but people say to me, you know, has it been in a two-wheeler, has it been in a four-wheeler? I just can't see what... You know what the problem is with that why people say you know um if the vehicle's balanced correctly a two-wheeler there shouldn't be any weight particularly on the horse's back only when you get on board um and get seen in the right position your shafts should float in the tugs with very little weight on the horse's back so as far as anything else goes i can't really see the problem so what we do um, we'll, when we put them in a four wheeler we'll just stand on the edge of the shafts put some weight on the edge of the shafts so they can feel the weight on their back should they ever go in a into a two wheeler because we use four wheelers we have got two wheelers here got like expensive two wheelers on you know air suspension and brakes and everything we very seldom use them most people are now in four wheelers so I don't know what the problem is with four wheelers people say about jackknifing well you know you could be in a two wheeler and the horse backs up as you're down a ditch spins round in the road you know it's, if the horse is steady is trained properly and doing its job it's not a problem you know but what is a problem which is what I'm going on to say now is this horse has got a new vehicle you know that's been bought for it purposely for it now on our vehicles we have several sets of shelves that we can use fit to any vehicle you know quite maybe four or five I don't know four certainly four or five sets of shelves for different size horses we have different size swingle trees that can attach to them shelves you know because we're a training yard we'll have a lot more equipment than you would at home so so this horse now this is not a problem to it but this is something for it to certainly consider um and that is that fairly now this is now in very narrow shelves compared with what it's been in that's more of a, a thing also has got to get used to because when we turn now it's going to feel entirely different behind the horse so that's not you know I only tell you what I do I don't tell anybody how to do anything let them do it how they you know whatever they believe is right um, and the worst thing in the world is giving advice to someone because two things happen there one, if they can't breed horse, it don't, it, you know, it could end in disaster because they wouldn't see the horse the same way as you do or be able to read its body language to know what you can do and what you can't do with the horse. Um, <clears throat> next thing is the equipment that people have. I mean, we only buy, uh, I don't mean that with any, you can buy what you can afford, but it's just a waste of time buying rubbish. You know, especially when you're connecting the animal, you know, you're connecting the poor bloody animal to something that's not even roadworthy and the harness is, is not quality harness, is crazy, you you know. And we get, it's becoming less and less with people when they, they'll say, would you fit me harness and, and vehicle? Um, it used to be years ago that they turn up with, something that was own made well you know not, not necessarily made by them but anyway you're better off with something that is from a reputable company um, somewhere where you've got some recourse if something goes wrong um, with harness and what's it when you think about it you're going out on a public highway yeah and even if people say well I don't I only go around tracks well when you're going around tracks you're putting that horse in, in danger if you haven't got reasonable equipment. Because anything can happen at any time with horse, you know, I would be the first to say that. 
there's always something that will surprise one or upset them um, at some time in their life. What we do here at All Strawn is cut that down to the absolute bare minimum so we show them everything. That's why we, you know, do all the things we do here. So you can't cover all bases, but you do your best to cover as much as you possibly can. And over the years, you find that, you know, that's a good idea to do that because it, 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 uh, this mare makes me laugh, you know. She's like, just like a three-year-old in so many ways. Like, we'll be coming up here. She can't just keep her head straight and her ears pricked and get on with the job. She's got to have a good look round. Look, nothing in that field at all, but then she'll have a look over this side. She'll carry on working. She'll carry on, you know, doing her job, but she cannot concentrate like you'd like her to, you know. <laughs> it's just... But that's, you know, she's 14, and she's just like a three-year-old that you've got to say, come on, get on with your job, just concentrate. Like a kid doing their own work, you know, like a child doing their own work exactly the same, you know. So... Yeah, she's a nice mare, this mare, and she's taken to the job real well. She's got all her new harness and new vehicle. So, as I say, the other one she had was very wide shoved. Would be, I don't think it would be an exaggeration to say they'd be 20, 24 inches, 20 to 24 inches wider than these ones. So now, when, when I, you know, she, she'll have her, her leg on the shelves, won't she? Her hip on the shelves. She'll fill it up on her chest different, you know, on her, <clears throat> on her shoulders, I should say. So that's more of a thing, and people don't think of that. So they'll maybe change from a vehicle that's got fairly wide shelves. I mean, some of these things they use today um, would have very wide shelves, and then they'll go and put the horse in a, something narrower, <clears throat> and that can affect them. So I would say what the point I'm making is to say that between the two and four wheeler, I can't really see, you know, the horse would know the difference, only the weight on its back, but if they're balanced properly, it would resemble very much the same weight as these shelves, which are hinged and laying on their back all the time because they're hinged, aren't they, against the four wheeler, as opposed to some that are, you know, you've got a single axle vehicle and, you know, they, if it's adjusted properly, they only float in the shelves, they don't, in the tugs. So I can't see that, but I can see a big difference. And people will say to me, phone me up, you know, from all over the all over the world. We get uh, we had some Americans here the other day just come to visit for the day, you know, um, Can Canadians before that, and then some oh, well, from all over Europe and all that. You know, they come and spend a day. or want to go out for a drive. Um, if we can accommodate and we do but you know it's, it's time's always the problem that's my baby he's a good girl so as I say getting back to what I was saying is you know the Whitford at Shelves can be a problem and we get loads of people that phone up and say I bought you know I had a new cart and it just took off it ran away in there well sometimes when I you know I say to them we'll send us a photograph you know or a little film and show me you know and quite often that's the problem so there was one horse, for instance, uh, in the States. They phoned me up and said, just can't understand it. Well, they had a Meadowbrook. They had a, um, a different vehicle. Then they got a Meadowbrook. So a Meadowbrook is a, a timber, you know, all timber construction. Um, the company, they're lo good vehicles, lovely vehicles. So they've got great big wheels to shelve, but the shelves are long and stick right out in front of the horse's chest, somewhat like our shelves used to do on a rally trap or something like that. Maybe even a bit longer, yeah? So they put the horse in this new one, it's, they still make them out there, you know? Lovely vehicles, all varnish normally. Um, and you, well, there's different styles of them, but basically you step up through the back, a bit like a Pickering float, if you like, lift the seat up, you know, sit down and, you know, Lift the seat up, walk through the space, sit down. It takes two people, sometimes three, across on a real big one. We can get three smallish people on it. And uh, and that's it. But the horse upset itself and ran off with it and smashed it to pieces. But the reason for that was I never saw... It was being filmed, you know, as it was happening. Not for me, just, you know, as a record of what the horse had done, I suppose, you know. Anyway, they put it in the new cart, and the shelves were very far forward. 
as I say, maybe six inches, maybe more in front of the horse's chest. And the horse swung round, swung his head round and stabbed himself right in the side of the face with the tip of the shafts. Because the shafts on them are, quite, are very straight, you know. They don't have a, you know, a sweep in them that our shafts would have. I mean, that's a generalisation, but if you look at an old rally trap or that, you know, any style of gig trap, they would have a, a high point where they fit through the tugs and then the shafts would be shaped going down at the front and coming down at the back to go into the, to, you know, to what they're fixed to the vehicle on a transom bar. So, yeah, that's what happened. So he swung round and now he's frightened himself. So he jumped forward and, you know, then he felt the jerk of the harness and... It, it was before anybody got on. She took off and then kicked the cart to pieces off of it. But in my opinion, um, this is a while ago now. I don't even know if I've still got the film. But um, it went off like that. But it was only because it swung its head round to see what they was doing behind. Obviously not used to having any shaft there at all. And smashed itself in the side of the jaw. Which would have hurt, you know, a metal ferrule on the end of the shafts, obviously. And uh, that would have hurt, you know, no question or doubt about it. So, yeah, that's a thing just to think about when you're changing vehicles. The width of the shaft, give the horse some, you know, a minute or two in the yard or 10 minutes, half an hour, whatever it takes um, to get used to it. I never tell anybody what to do because, as you say, it's very hard. I'd you know, say to you what I would do in that case is, yeah. But a lot of people, um, perhaps, no disrespect to anybody, perhaps don't know how to read horse. Um, I mean, I've been doing this for a long, long time. And a long, long time. And, you know, obviously over that time, if you're interested in anything, you don't matter whether you're a carpenter, a, a plumber, or a, you know, an artist, it don't matter, does it? If you love what you do, you'll get better at it over time. And reading and understanding them is the you know the important thing. But when we connect these two, these dear little, you know, these all I mean they never asked it. They wouldn't come out of the field and say, stick me on this on, I'd like to pull your cart for you, would they? I mean common sense tells you that. Their life don't revolve around being attached to something with harness or lump a bit in its mouth and ever oh, take some justification. And therefore, you've got to do it right, haven't you? So you've got to make sure they're like this horses, happy. You know, just going along, strolling down the road, don't care about the traffic coming past. It's only got a soft rubber bit in its mouth, which I'm a strong believer in. My belief is, if you can drive them in the situations we drive them in, heavy traffic, up on the, you know, the road over the dual carriageway, and stand there looking down at the traffic, big every arctic's coming up and you've got them in a rubber soft rubber bit and there's literally hundreds of films on there and they're in soft rubber bits unless the client off will say to us sometimes um, that they want it in the again in the show ring and they want it to look more I wash it so you can get Liverpools now with rubber mouthpieces you know well get anything with rubber mouthpiece if you you know you can get more or less anything you want with a rubber mouthpiece. That's my baby. So yeah, that's um, and also with this vehicle, which I'm I'm going to start making a series of films, um, you know, for people to buy or down. I don't know how they're going to do it. Buy or download or something off the internet you know I don't really understand that sort of thing or on discs you know um, of different things like this these shelves here I've set for this horse to be at this height you know because that's why you have you know holes to put your, your tugs where you want to where well, you want your tugs to stay on the pad so you don't want them too low that's another thing they do in, a, in America, which is really strange. If you have a look on YouTube and see all horses being driven in America in shelves, they'll have the shelves really low. I mean, seriously low. Um, much lower than we would. And 
I don't know particularly know the reason for that. It's it's not it's not because the vehicle don't fit. I mean the vehicle's made for that size of horse. Um, you know to fit that horse at 15 hands, whatever it might be. But the shelves are really low. So if we put them where we would, you know, normally steady walk down the side of the. Uh, Okay, babe, trot now. Trot. Trot. That's good. One. So, if we put, um, you know, lifted them up, most people that have bought a halt, you bought a, a vehicle out there for horse, and we put them where we normally would have them situated, you know, positioned on the side of the horse, come on. They would, uh, They would the, 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 the balance of the vehicle would be completely out. You know, the floor of the vehicle would be pointing up. You know, it wouldn't be level, basically. So, come on, babe. My old mate here won't work. Cheers, mate. God bless. He waits for us every time, that fellow. You know, he does his deliveries round here. I don't want him to wait. <laughs> I want him to come on, but he does it. And, uh, you know, so that's nice, isn't it? So it's another... Yeah, I think you've got a parked one. Whenever I see him, I know he's going to pull up and stop, regardless of what I'm driving. And um, which is another good thing because it enables you to see. Come on, babe, get up. Now there's a horse calling this one. You know, you can hear the horse coming. This also knows, but you'll have a look. Now that you can understand horse looking around, can't you? You know, you can, because over to the left hand side here there's some horses. So you can understand the horse looking around, it just makes me laugh, you know, it's funny. Because he's all over the place, you know, looking. Of course, horse will follow its head, so you have to keep it straight, you know. But she'll come like more to it before she goes home, she'll be back up more to it, you know, than. Uh, Come on, baby. There's a good deal. And it's a big, powerful horse, you know. This is 14 years old. I only just started doing this, but it's a big, powerful horse. I mean, seriously. And, you know, obviously there's a slight concern with this horse that how they'll cope with it, the owners, but then I'm always concerned about that. And... You can only say to them, you know, what you believe. I can drive it, you know, obviously any of our, you know, like Ray or me or whoever can drive it without any trouble at all. But that don't mean to say they're going to do it because they don't want to be, you know, they're used to a rubber bit. Um, they're used to discipline. Now, discipline in this day and age is looked on as a... You know, I don't know, it's a dirty word in this day and age, but discipline's nothing to do with corporal punishment. It's nothing to do with that. It's not to do with, you know, anything at all like that. It, it's to do with you discipline yourself to get out of bed in the morning, to be at work on time, to clean your teeth, have a shower, I don't know, keep your house tidy, get your car taxed, whatever. That's all discipline. In that all she's world, there is no discipline like that. Why would there be? The discipline comes between their position in the herd, and that's the only discipline there is. You know, they can lay down, they can play if someone wants to play with them, they can sleep when they like, get up when they like, they can eat when they like. But we bring them into our world and they have to conform to what we want. So, that should be so... It's got to be done correctly. It's got to be done so they're safe, confident and happy. It can't be done where they're in any way unhappy doing the job, you know. So this horse is happy enough doing the job, but it's just so nosy. I mean, seriously nosy. You get a few like it, you know. Others, they don't. They just go into a zone, you know. 
get their head in the right place and away they go. They don't, <laughs> they don't think of it at all. Come on, up you go. They just get on with the job. But she will just turn her head everywhere, look, and her ears are going all the time. But she's not upset. She's not worried about what's behind her or what she's doing. She's just interested to see what's happening. Now, on the right-hand side here, a little while ago, there was cattle in there, you know? And they were long-horned cattle. You know, a real old-fashioned breed. Great long horns on them. Motley-coloured things, you know what I mean? Red and white. Um, and they were in there, in that field there, and, you know, on the right, on the left-hand side here. And uh, like a squirrel just run across the road, take no notice at all. Another horse would jump at that, you know, what's that? You know, got to make you jump. <laughs> but she's just nosy. She just wants a nosy neighbour, I'll call her. But a nice horse, you know, a lovely horse, nice kind horse. You know, no badness in her at all. But she gets on now, and I think the lady's going to see a big difference in this horse, where it would plod up the road. She said, you know, it was just a plod. She'd go up there and, you know, they want to go home all the time. This one's entirely different now. She wants to be out and seeing and getting on, you know, and loving what she's doing. Come on, baby, up you go. Here, old, her old tail's up her quarters, like, you know, she's nice there. But she's just nosy, yeah, that's what she is. <laughs>